SpaceX is about to make history once more by attempting the first ever dual booster landing on two different autonomous drone ships. In today's video, let's discuss how SpaceX expects to accomplish this uphill task and how this success may benefit the company going forward. Could the success of this attempt open the door to more Falcon Heavy missions? For decades, if you wanted to reach space, you had to sacrifice a rocket. You'd attach your payload to the rocket, and it would carry the payload high into the sky. Once the rocket ran out of fuel, it would separate from the payload and either crash back down to Earth, burn up in the atmosphere, or become space junk. That got the job done, but a single launch could cost tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars, putting space out of reach for anyone without deep pockets, usually governments or the military, and that's been holding society back. But that time is coming to an end, thanks to reusable rockets. Reusable rockets are exactly what they sound like, rockets that aren't limited to a single launch and Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, has been instrumental in their development. In 2015, SpaceX launched one of its Falcon 9 rockets into orbit and then landed it, upright, back on Earth, a feat, five years, and many failed attempts in the making. The engineering of the system was complicated, but the key was giving up on the idea of using parachutes for the return and instead controlling the descent using thrusters. After the payload separation, thrusters near the top of the rocket flipped around, pushing the whole thing backward. When the Falcon 9 was just about to reach Earth, its engines fired, slowing the rocket's descent onto the landing pad. After repeating that success several more times, SpaceX used one of its recovered Falcon 9 rockets for a 2017 launch, marking the first reuse of a rocket capable of delivering payloads into Earth's orbit. Since then, the company has relaunched many of its reusable rockets, including the biggest in the company's arsenal, the Falcon Heavy. The Falcon Heavy has a history of successful booster landings, both on land and at sea. When it comes to sea landings, SpaceX relies on its fleet of autonomous drone ships for recovery operations. The drone ship plays a crucial role in SpaceX's goal of significantly reducing the cost of space launch services through full and rapid reusability. It is an important component developed as part of SpaceX's multi-year reusable rocket development program. Throughout its history, the Super Heavy has utilized various landing methods. However, it has never attempted to land two boosters simultaneously on autonomous drone ships in a single mission. This attempt was confirmed through communication between SpaceX and the Federal Communications Commission seeking authorization for launch vehicle communications and experimental first-stage drone ship recovery operations for SpaceX Falcon Heavy Mission 1468, launching from Complex 39A, Kennedy Space Center. The mission includes three suborbital first-stage boosters and an orbital second stage. Trajectory data will be shared with NTIA USAF and NASA, all while downrange Earth stations will have receive only capabilities. All operations are coordinated in advance with the range. The communication also clarifies that the purpose of the operation is to launch vehicle communications for a mission launching from LC 39A Kennedy Space Center with drone ship recovery of two side core boosters. The center core will be discarded and land in the water. This communication confirms that SpaceX will indeed attempt a simultaneous drone landing, 
while the center stage of the rocket will be intentionally ditched in the water. While on paper, this dual landing may sound like just another day at the office for SpaceX, it is anything but. The fact is that the Falcon Heavy has never had a successful center core retrieval on the drone ship. Over the course of its operation history, the Falcon Heavy has only attempted a drone ship landing three times. Two of those attempts saw the core missing the platform altogether and ending up in the ocean, while one attempt saw the core make contact with the drone ship before tipping over and exploding. However, it is worth mentioning that the last of these attempts happened more than four years ago, and SpaceX has grown tremendously over that time. The company now has a wealth of experience and a solid track record behind it. If successful, this achievement is sure to propel Falcon Heavy to even greater heights and unlock a plethora of new opportunities for the rocket. To put things simply, this dual landing that SpaceX is about to attempt is far from ordinary. The truth is that Falcon Heavy has never managed to retrieve its center core successfully on the drone ship. Throughout its history, the Falcon Heavy has tried landing on a drone ship only three times. Unfortunately, in two of those attempts, the core completely missed the landing platform and took a nosedive into the deep ocean. In the other attempt, the core actually made contact with the drone ship, but ended up toppling over and exploding. It must be considered, however, that those attempts happened more than four years ago. Since then, SpaceX has grown by leaps and bounds. They've gathered tons of experience and have proven themselves time and time again. So this time around, they're better equipped than ever to conquer this challenge. If they pull off this jaw-dropping feat, it will be a game changer for the Falcon Heavy. A successful landing will help the rocket in reaching new heights and unlock a world of incredible opportunities. But the booster landing attempt is not the only exciting part of this mission. The Falcon Heavy will also make history by taking off with the largest commercial satellite ever made, the Jupiter 3. The Jupiter 3, also known as Echo Star 24, is an impressive satellite that uses advanced technology to provide a wide range of applications. It's built on a reliable platform and boasts an entirely new design packed with innovative features. This includes smaller electronics, powerful amplifiers, and more efficient antennas, enabling it to deliver an incredible speed of 500 gigabytes per second. The spacecraft incorporates 18 patented technological advancements that allow it to provide concentrated capacity in important areas. While many people focus on smaller satellites, the Jupiter 3 serves as a reminder that large spacecraft still have their place for specific purposes. When folded up, the Jupiter 3 is roughly the size of a school bus. It weighs around 9 metric tons and offers a whopping 500 gigabit per second capacity for communication in North and South America. This means it can provide high-speed internet access to a growing market in that region. The launch of the Jupiter 3 will double the fleet capacity of Echo Star Hughes and allow HughesNet to add hundreds of thousands of new subscribers. It's a significant advancement in satellite communication. Recently, the engineers and technicians at Maxar conducted environmental tests on the Jupiter 3. These tests ensure that the satellite can withstand the harsh conditions of space. Once the tests are complete, the satellite will be transported to Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, where it will be launched into space using a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. The weight of the Jupiter 3 fits well within the capabilities of the Falcon Heavy, even considering 
the challenges of reaching a geostationary orbit. This orbit requires more propellant due to the greater distance, which means less weight can be allocated for the satellite itself. However, being in a geostationary orbit has its benefits. The Jupiter-3 will remain fixed in position, allowing it to maintain a constant view of Earth and establish stronger communication links with the ground, resulting in significantly improved latency. However, the development of this satellite has faced some challenges. Originally, it was supposed to launch in 2021, but it took longer to manufacture because of the COVID-19 pandemic and extensive engineering work. Maxar, the company responsible for the satellite, has made an agreement with EchoStar to compensate for the delays. Mark Weimer, a senior vice president at Hughes Network Systems, expressed excitement about the satellite's capabilities. With more people working and learning from home, as well as relying on online shopping, there is a growing need for data and fast internet connections. The new satellite will provide download speeds of 50 to 100 megabits per second, benefiting people who live in areas with limited internet access. Hughes has been working on creating products and services to meet these demands. The satellite is scheduled to launch sometime in August of this year, barring any further delays. A successful launch will reinforce SpaceX's claim as the most reliable spaceflight company operational today, while a disaster will not only thwart their attempts of a successful dual booster landing, but also scare away potential clients in the future. For now, all we can do is wonder if they can pull it off. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about SpaceX's mind-blowing upgrades to the Starship. Do you think SpaceX should make larger recovery ships to increase the chance of booster recovery?